Hi guys, and welcome to this week's video tutorial. Today we'll be making a simple toddler education game. It's going to allow the kids to drag and drop shapes over silhouettes to help them associate shapes, and also click on certain objects like fruit, and they'll pop up and say their name into the Māori. So all of the audio files and sprites you're going to need today are in a folder that you can find in the description of the video. Just click on the Google Drive link and download the folder called um, Toddler Resources, I think it's called. Cool. So now that you've done that, let's click on New Project and get started. So we're going to call this Toddler Game. And we're going to use the 4x3 ratio landscape. So this is the 4x3 is the ratio associated with Apple. So this will work comfortably on iPhones and iPads. And we're just going to click Create. We're going to start off by doing our project cleanup. So we're going to change the size of the layout to half this number. So 480, 640. So it's 640 by 480. Uh, we're going to change the name of our layout to Main Menu. And we're going to change the name of the event sheet to, you guessed it, Main Menu EVT. Now we're going to add the background for our game. It's going to be a sprite this time. We're going to just name it DKG. And we're going to open it from a file. So at the top left, there's a folder icon. And we're going to click on it. And we're looking inside Toddler Resources for an image called Title Background. Cool. It's a little big right now. So what we're going to do is make sure we select it, and we are going to half, uh, we're going to make its size the same size as our layout. So 640 by 480. And now we're going to put it in the middle of our screen. To do that simply, all we do is we make the position half the size of the layout size. So that would be 320 by 240. That was easy. Now we'll add the control buttons for our game. So new object, these are sprites as well. And the first, sorry, the first one is gonna be called shape BTN. And again, we're gonna load from file and we're looking for the shapes button. We're gonna repeat this process, go to sprite, and we're going to call the second one Fruit BTN. And this one's going to be called Letter Button. Uh, we'll just have to pretend that the A stands for Apple. Cool. Now that we've got these two, we need a way to control our game. So we're going to add the Touch function. So insert new object. And we're looking for the Touch Control. So we've added touch to our game. Now we've got to add somewhere to for these buttons to navigate us to. So we're going to right click on layouts. And we're going to go add layout with an event sheet. So add event sheet. And the event sheet is going to be called shapes. Sorry, the layout is going to be called shapes. The event sheet is going to be called shapes EVT. So make sure you guys are naming your event sheets and your layouts because this can get quite confusing if you don't. We're going to repeat this process and add a new layout with an event sheet. And we're going to name this one Fruit. And it's event sheet. Fruit, uh, fruit EVT, sorry. Cool. Now we're ready to do our code. So let's go back to our main menu event sheet. And we're going to add an event, touch, on tap object, and we're going to say shape button first. We're going to add an action to that, and that'll be system, go to layout, and it'll be shapes. Cool. Now we just need to do one for fruit. So I'll let you guys figure that one out by yourselves. For this next part of our video, we're just going to 
really quickly set up all the foundation we need to add audio into our game. So we're going to add a new object. I'm going to name this object. Oh, sorry. We're going to find the object audio. We don't have to name it anything, and we just insert. So now that audio is added to our file, it means we can now play sound. Now we, we need to have sounds to play. So we're going to click on sounds on the right hand side. Just right click on it. We're going to go import sounds. We're going to click on the import sounds button. And in our toddler resources, there's six sound files that you need to um, that you need to import. So just click on the first one, Aporo. Hold shift and then click on the last one and it'll select them all and then click open. And then just click import. All right, let's get started on our first layout shapes. So to do this, we just click on, double click on the layout shapes and we're gonna have to resize our layout. So again, we just change it to exactly half, which is 640 by 480. Now we can insert some objects. So just right click, insert new object, and it'll be a sprite, and it'll be circle outline. Click insert, and again, we're gonna open it from a file, and we're looking for dot circle. Make sure we change the collision polygon. Again, you do that by selecting the collision, set collision polygon tool. And make sure that it's pretty generous. That way our collisions work properly. I'm gonna move it to the top left. Cool, that's all we need to do. Now we're gonna insert another object, a sprite once again, and we're gonna call this one circle. I'm gonna open it from a file and we're gonna click circle. It's got a really good collision box, so we're just gonna leave it. And now we need to make sure that our circle and the dot circle are the same size. So we're gonna change the size for both of them to 140 by 140. 140 by 140. And then we're gonna put the circle in the middle, down the bottom. Cool. Now we're gonna make sure we select our circle and we are going to take its position and we're gonna copy it. We're gonna use this for later. Now we're gonna to go to behaviors and we're gonna give our circle the drag and drop behavior. Cool. Now let's start giving it some code. So if we open up our shapes event sheet, which is on the right hand side, we're gonna add event, circle, on drop, so this code will execute when the player clicks to drag the circle and let's go. And we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna go add sub event. The sub event will be circle. Is overlapping another object. And that object will be circle outline. So this code will read when you drop the circle if it's touching the outline, we are going to first destroy the original circle. So that's add action, circle, destroy. And then we're going to go circle outline, spawn another object. I'm going to choose the object to be circle. So what that does is it'll destroy the circle you dropped on top of it, and it'll make a new one right in the center. So it looks like it's snapped onto position. Cool. But what happens if we miss the circle? Say I drag it and it's not where it, it, it doesn't touch the outline. We need to make the circle go back to its original position. So we're gonna click on the sub event. We're gonna right click and go add else statement. So in, right click, add else. And the action for this else will be circle set position. And we're gonna paste in our number. So 
it'll be 320 by 394. Cool. But how do we win this game? Right now, the we've got we've got the code we need to, to snap all of our shapes, but we need the code to win. So we're going to right click and go add global variable. And we're going to name this count. So this will count how many we have right. So when we get it right, when the circle is overlapping circle outline, we need to add action. And we need it. We need to click global and local variables add to. We're going to add one to count. But what happens if they drag circle over the outline and then just keep doing it? So we're going to have to disable circles drag and drop function. So add another action underneath. And we're going to go circle, drag and drop, set enabled. We're going to set that to disabled. Cool. But now that we've got our count and it works, we need a condition to win. So we're going to come down to add event, system, compare variable, and we're going to compare counts. And if since we only have one object right now, we're just going to make that one. So when count equals one, we need to add an action system. Wait, I'm going to wait two seconds. And then we're going to add action system go to layout. And this will take us back to the main menu. But for this code, we also need to reset count. So that way, when you win and you go back to the main menu, if you come back to shapes, it'll take you back to main menu because count is still two. So to do that, we go add event, system, and in search, we're looking for on start of layout. When the layout restarts, we are going to add action, system, and we're going to set value. We're going to set value of count to zero. So let's give this a try. Cool. Works perfectly. But it's a bit boring. It doesn't do anything. So we're going to add another action underneath our is touching outline. And we're going to say audio play. And we're looking for the file tapatoru. Kaore porohita. I'm going to go done. Let's try it again. Now when you drag it over, porohita, it will say porohita, which means circle, and then end. So now that you know how to do that, I want you to repeat all of these steps and try and do it off by memory and add the square and the triangle to the game as well. Now that we're finished with our shapes layout and we've added the three shapes to the game, let's add our fruit. So we're gonna to go to the top right and double click on our fruit layout. And we're gonna do the same thing and just clean up our layout. So we're gonna resize it again to 640. And we're gonna change the second property to 480. Oh, well, let's add an object and we're gonna add a sprite. And this sprite's going to be called Apple. I'm going to open the image from a file. And it's going to be Apple. Let's resize it. It's pretty big. Cool. Now we're going to add something special to it called an effect. So if you look at to the middle left hand side, you should see effects. I'm going to add a new effect. So effects are pretty nifty. Um, I recommend after this tutorial going through and trying a few of them. Um, some of them deal with blending in color, like adding in hue or darkness. Some of it has to do with distortion, so you can make your objects look or feel a certain way. I'm going to try the bulge effect. So we're going to add the bulge effect. And we're going to come to its effects properties on the middle left hand side. And we're going to change scale to zero. Now we're going to open up the fruit event sheet. So that is on the top right underneath event sheets. Okay, add event. On touch. Okay, on tap object. 
it'll be Apple. When you tap the Apple, what do we want to happen? We want to play the sound, so add action audio play, and we're going to click on Apple. Then we're going to actually use our bulge effect. So to do that, we go add action, Apple, set effect parameter, and the effect, you actually have to type this in yourself. Make sure you leave the speech marks, and we're going to type in capital B, bulge. The index parameter will be 1, and the value we change will be 40. Now once the apple bulges, we're going to give it about 1.5 seconds. So we're going to go add action, system, wait, and it's going to be 1.5 seconds. Then we're going to return our Apple back to normal. So if we click on the bulge code, we're going to copy it and paste it just underneath this wait 1.5 seconds. We're going to edit it and change the value back to zero. I want you guys to give this a try. It should make your Apple grow a bit and then shrink back down after saying Apple. So the rest of your activity now is to add the other two pieces of fruit. If I'm correct, I believe they are an orange and a pear. And if you're finished, take a look at some of the other effects and try and apply the other effects to your fruit and see what kind of cool things you can come up with.